Edison Tower, Bridge I-655 is actually going to depart to the east, uh, uh, it's climbing up through the clouds and then just going to head outside of everything, and at about right now you'll probably realize that I'm not going to listen to Gail's instructions and I'm just heading to East Texas in a career track, so uh, I'm going to I'm going to pull the COM1 circuit breaker and the COM2 circuit breaker right here soon, as soon as I unkey the mic. Career track 655, Edison Tower, say again. Career track 655, Edison Tower. Career track 655, Edison Tower. 554, just hold position for a minute. Hold position, 54. Career track 655, Edison Tower. Career track 655, Edison Tower. Career track 655, Addison Tower, you are, are you still monitoring this frequency? Okay, so about 7 p.m. last night, 23-year-old Logan James takes a 172 from ATP Flight School and does a touch and go in the traffic pattern, then makes that radio transmission, flies for about an hour, and pretty intentionally crashes that 172 into an open field in Texas. Luckily, not hurting anyone else on the ground, but obviously hurting himself in the airplane. So lots of questions here. At this point, more questions than answers. Haven't had time to talk to his fellow student pilots at the flight school, flight instructors, other people that knew him. What would possess him to, to want to kill himself in the first place and then especially to do it in an aircraft? Was it frustration in flight training? Flight training is pretty stressful and frustrating. Was it other things going on in his life most likely? And, and certainly probably something not quite right in his head because if you are gonna go kill yourself, something's not quite totally right there. Even if things are really, really bad, really making that decision to actually take your own life is a pretty big jump to make. Things really are never that bad when you have a clear mind. So this really opens up probably the bigger questions aside from what happened in this single case, but more so the questions of mental health and aviation and, and where does that fit in? Obviously things like PTSD, and uh, any sort of past ADHD medication use are big disqualifying factors for your medical. A lot of people, kind of, for lack of a better term, suffering through that process of dealing with the FA and trying to get their medicals approved or get medicals reinstated after having some sort of TBI or being on any sort of medication in the past, uh, being diagnosed with PTSD, trying to prove mental fitness. What did Logan James have to prove for mental fitness if he didn't have any of those other issues in his past medical records? Probably none, right? It's pretty easy to get a third class or a first class medical if you don't have much medical history, uh, which is a good thing. Not like we want to make the process any harder, and there's not really any great suggestions I have at this point, but I would love to hear from you what you think should be done to prevent cases like this from happening, to prevent people like Logan James from getting into the cockpit of an airliner or getting access to an airliner where he could hurt a lot more people. Now, I'm not saying that Logan should never be a pilot or he doesn't deserve to be or anything like that, but at the state he was in, clearly a bad spot in his life and should have been nowhere near aircraft. So what has to change? What has to be modified there from the FAA, from the medical side of things, from mental health in general, and what has to change on the flight school side of things? I'd love to hear in the comments below because I've heard so many different things. I've never attended ATP flight school but quite frankly, I've heard mixed reviews about it, about what kind of quality the aircraft are. I mean, this one must have been pretty good quality. It was a very new 172. What kind of quality instruction you receive there, what the instructor pay is like, uh, what the training program looks like. Do people actually finish in the, for the time and money that they're quoted or do they not? So I'd love to hear from you if you have any experience with friends that have gone to ATP or maybe you did yourself. Uh, comment anonymously below. What does that process look like? Um, and what kind of school is ATP? Obviously, they're a nationwide school. And I'm sure it depends on what campus you go to. Results may vary. But being a big nationwide school like that, what's the admission process like? Do they do anything to screen things out like this? Because certainly they don't want to be losing airplanes. They don't need the negative press. And they don't want to see anyone get hurt anyways. So overall, lots of questions to be asked and hopefully answered here. Lots of big questions beyond this particular case of Logan in this 172, beyond Career Track 655, of what should be done with mental health and aviation? What should be hopefully more than one clear path forward? Because right now the one clear path forward of cog scan or cog screen, whatever it is, it's not a good path. Period. I mean, any way you cut it. But it's best to have a path forward for people that have concussions, the people that have 
past use of ADHD medication 10 years ago in their past, past PTSD history, it's good to have a path forward for them to be able to earn an FAA medical and qualify for that. It's also good to be able to identify people that need help and get them the help that they need so things like this don't happen. Suggestions on this, super open to them. Comments are right below for you guys to leave that and would love to hear what your thoughts are on this, what should have been done different. And um, as far as, you know, he stole an airplane, anybody can steal a car or an airplane. So, I mean, beefing up security at airports, if that's your answer to leave in the comments below, it's not the answer. Um, the FAA already gave us plenty of crap about a video we posted about what to do if you lose the keys to your airplane and how you can start an airplane without a key because the keys and aircraft are not really there for security purposes. Security is really the fences and all the other mechanisms we have in place at airports. So ultimately, would love to hear your thoughts on this. It's, it's a sad one, it's a bad one, but hopefully the amount of attention that this is getting already might just be that extra kickstart to the momentum that's already building there to talk about pilot mental health in aviation, mental health in general in aviation, air traffic controllers, mechanics, the whole gamut, and ensuring that safety in the national airspace system, safety in the NASA is maintained, and also personal safety, personal health is, is accounted for and taken into consideration here of how to ensure people's mental health is, is looked after in a positive way. It is 2024, it's not going away. We don't give mental health days here at Flight Mike Alpha, we don't believe in them, but we do want to see people's mental health at this state to be taken into consideration. It is an important thing and it's a serious thing and it is uh, sad that Logan is no longer here to, uh, to be a part of that conversation. Hopefully we can all have a productive conversation. Doesn't always get productive here on Facebook and YouTube, but keep it productive guys. Thanks so much for watching. As always, if you cannot fly every day, fly at MikeAlpha.com, be safe. And if you're feeling down about things, it's never that bad. There's always folks you can reach out to. We've all had bad days, we've had bad weeks, bad years, but things can get better. And uh, aviation's a pretty good group of folks to be around to, to find better days ahead. Stay safe, guys.